Hello everyone. I do hope you're keeping well and that you're encouraged during these difficult days. As part of this Passion Week, we're looking today at what happened on the night before our Lord Jesus was crucified. What an extraordinary night that was. It began with the Lord's Supper and then Jesus went out to the Garden of Gethsemane where he prayed. It's in the garden that we're given a unique insight into the emotional life of our Lord Jesus, into what it took for him to become the saviour that he is. It says, then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane and he said to his disciples, sit here while I go over there and pray. We know from the Gospels that Jesus gave himself to prayer especially at key moments in his ministry. And here, as he enters his passion, he gives himself again to prayer. It says, and taking with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee. Peter, James and John were the inner circle around Jesus. They were the ones who were closest to the Saviour. They had seen his glory revealed in the Transfiguration and Christ wanted them close to him as he prepared himself for all that was about to take place. The scripture goes on to say, he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, my soul is very sorrowful, even to death. Remain here and watch with me. We sometimes hear about people dying of a broken heart. That's how great the weight was upon the Lord Jesus. My soul is very sorrowful, even to death. Think of the sheer weight of emotion that was on the heart and the mind of the Lord Jesus. Then we read, and going a little further, he fell on his face and prayed, saying, My Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me, nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. What was in the cup which was so awful that even the thought of it was overwhelming to the Son of God? Our Lord Jesus certainly knew that a painful death lay ahead of him. But in the Garden of Gethsemane, it seems that our Lord was given a clearer glimpse of what was in that cup. First of all, he would bear our sin. Christ was without sin. He knew no sin. What would it mean for him to bear the sin of the world? Secondly, he would be forsaken. Christ had only ever known the joy of fellowship with the Father. What would it mean for him to be forsaken and alone? Thirdly, he would endure divine wrath. Christ had only ever known the approval of the Father's smile. What would it mean for him to endure the divine wrath of God? In each of these three horrors, bearing sin, being forsaken and enduring the wrath of God, Christ was going into the unknown. He's going into a place that he's never gone before and he doesn't know what it will be like. How are we to draw strength from this for our own lives? Well, our Saviour knows what it is to be troubled. These challenging days that we live in can cause us to feel troubled. But when you face a journey into the unknown and it takes you where you've never been before, your Saviour has been there and he will walk with you. If you find yourself looking at the future, with a sense of dread, if what lies ahead of you seems very dark and you're saying, how am I going to cope with this? Your Saviour has been there and he will walk with you. Jesus said, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. If the cup had passed from him, it would have passed to me and to you. But praise God, he drank it. 
He bore our sins. He was forsaken. He endured the wrath of God. All that was needed has been done. Your sins, though they may be many, have been laid on the Lord Jesus. Christ was forsaken by the Father, so that the Father might say to you, I will never leave you, I will never forsake you. Christ endured the wrath of God, so that you might hear the words, There is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. He drank the cup for you and for me. Praise God. Thanks be to God for his unspeakable love. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, as we have considered the burden that was laid on the shoulders of the Lord Jesus, we are filled with a great sense of awe and wonder and praise at what our Saviour has done for us and all that is ours in him. And we ask that you'll help us today to live in the good of all that he accomplished upon the cross. We ask these things in our Saviour's wonderful name. Amen. God bless you.